uh, with all these AGEs. As I said, you don't want to run the, the, the melee reaction interlining your blood vessels in the brain. Here are the arteries of two men who died of uh, who died at the same age. These are brain arteries, the middle cerebral arteries. Uh, this man up here did not have Alzheimer's dementia. This man down here did. And you can see the difference in the artery walls, and you can see how thickened and inflamed and swollen these arteries wall are, these artery walls are. And if you stain for them, you can see how thick they are with these advanced glycation end products and the damage they cause. There's a big vascular component to Alzheimer's and the standard Western diet of meats and sugars and oils and dairy and processed food year after year after year surely is a contributing factor to winding up with Alzheimer's dementia in your later years. Um, now, um, so I'm pointing this out because vegan junk food, the, the chips and the pastries and the fries and the, and the processed foods can be really damaging from all the AGEs and the salt and uh, oxidized uh, proteins, et cetera. So just because you're vegan doesn't mean you're 100% healthy. On the contrary, that's why we talk about whole food plant-based. You want plant foods that you can recognize like they grew in the garden. Oh, there's a tomato. There's a there's a there's lettuce. There's a cucumber. That's the whole plant foods we're talking about. These nothing in this uh, in this image here uh, are whole plant foods. That's for sure. So uh, there's a, a pitch about avoiding vegan junk food, but that's not what most Americans eat on a daily basis. Most Americans, Canadians, Brits, Aussies, Kiwis. Uh, they eat a diet based on animal flesh. And once you add meat into the diet on a regular basis, you are you now unleash an entire new tier of molecular marauders that flood through your tissues with every meal. Let's look at just some of them. I could spend two lectures on this one slide alone, but here's what flows through every tissue in your body with every meat-based meal. First of all, nobody eats raw meat. Um, the very act of uh, broiling a steak and grilling the chicken and, uh, and frying, uh, frying the chicken and grilling the burger oxidizes the cholesterol in the animal muscle. I'll show you in a few minutes how, how atherogenic the oxidized cholesterol particles are. When you put a, a piece of animal muscle under a broiler on a grill, you oxidize the glycogen and nucleic acids and you create Reactive aldehydes, glyoxal and acrylene, these are mutagenic. They damage your genes. These are the genes that call forth the enzymes in your cells that make all your chemistry happen. Why eat something that damages the genes in all your cells with every meal? But uh, that's what cooked meat does. Steaming broccoli doesn't do this. Making rice or boiling oatmeal does not do this. It, it's uh, But cooking animal muscle at high temperatures do. New 5-GC is the sialic acid that only animals make. It sets off inflammatory reactions throughout the body. Our paleo friends are giving themselves a shot of new 5-GC three times a day or however often they eat meat. Endotoxin, nasty molecule. Uh, where does that come from? Uh, it comes from the slaughterhouse. Um, uh, every carcass, cows, pigs, chickens, whatever it is, as the as the intestinal tract is pulled out, as the carcass is eviscerated, it's inevitable you get spillage of the of the of the stomach contents. And as a result, on every cutting surface in the slaughterhouse, you can take a culture swab and swab that surface, and you'll get a luxurious growth of E. coli and Salmonella and Shigella and Enterococcus clostridia, Pseudomonas. The entire rogues gallery of enteric bacteria form a coating of bacteria on every steak and chop and chicken breast that leaves the meat packing plant. Why is that important? Because that piece of meat is wrapped up in clear plastic, put in the meat case of your local market, where the ultraviolet light shines down and kills the bacteria. As these bacteria die, their cell walls break up, and that releases this nasty lipopolysaccharide called endotoxin. Uh, any doctor who spent time in the intensive care unit knows about endotoxic shock, how it kills patients. Um, just walk around this daisy of distress to see what endotoxin does. Uh, releases free radicals, it depresses heart function, it releases histamine, it releases tumor necrosis factor, makes your blood clot. Nasty stuff, endotoxin. And it's heat stable. Grilling the burger, uh, broiling the steak does not get rid of the endotoxin. And again, our paleo friends are giving themselves a shot of endotoxin three times a day. And endotoxin makes your gut leaky. 
Uh, and it increases intestinal permeability. It lets food proteins and bacterial cell wall proteins leak out into your into your immune system, and that then forms antibodies against tissues that uh, that cause inflammation uh, throughout the body. Uh, endotoxins not uh, not your friend to say the least, and a meat based diet is inherently uh, laden with endotoxin. TMAO, what is that? Um, that is the molecule created by the microbes, the bacteria in your gut that gets summoned up. If you're eating uh, meat and eggs on a regular basis, then you're eating lots of carnitine and choline. Well, that's going to summon up microbes in your gut, like peptostreptococci and clostridia, now, who love eating carnitine and choline. They will turn it into a substance called trimethylamine that your liver then oxidizes into trimethylamine oxide. This is a molecule from hell that drives cholesterol into the artery walls, increases risk for heart attacks and strokes and sudden death. And it turns out that, as you might expect, uh, increased levels of TMA, uh, increased risk of major adverse cardiac events and all-cause mortality. Well, how about the folks who eat lots of meat, like the paleo folks? Well, check their TMAO levels. You'll find they're walking around with high levels of TMAO uh, in their bloodstream. We are not carnivorous apes, no matter what they try to tell us, uh, no matter what they think the caveman ate. We were starchivores back then. We're starchivores now. Uh, and the cooking of animal muscle inevitably creates carcinogenic cancer causing amines that smear on the stomach wall, give you gastric cancers, on the colon wall, give you colon cancers. When you eat concentrated protein like meat is, and all the amino acids um, flow up into the liver, the liver responds by putting out a surge of a hormone insulin like growth factor one, IGF one. This is one of the most potent growth promoting hormones in the body. Uh, great if you're a growing 11-year-old girl, not so great if you're an adult woman with uh, early breast cancer growing or a guy with a big prostate with some malignant cells in there. The last thing you want is a diet that makes you walk around with high levels of IGF-1. It's like throwing gasoline on a fire, but that's what a meat-based diet does. The heme iron makes red meat red. It increases the risk of strokes and cancers. Don't have time to go into the mechanism. But the animals in the feedlot are fed bushels of grain sprayed with herbicides and pesticides. They drink water with lead and mercury and cadmium in it. They're given hormones and antibiotics and growth promoters. All these substances bioaccumulate in the animal's muscles. So when you bite into that burger, uh, that finger licking good chicken breast, uh, you're eating all the concentrated pesticides and herbicides and, and growth promoters that animal is fed. So this is what flows through your tissues with every meat-based meal. I call it the postprandial red tide. Again, postprandial is after eating. This is the red tide that flows through all your tissues. I could spend two lectures on this one slide about all the components of the, of the red tide. I've hit a number of them already. But it's a fatty tide. It's a salty tide. It's a sugary tide. It's, it's antigenic, so it's off immune reactions. It's acid forming. It's full of sulfates and phosphates that form acids. It's mutagenic, damages your genes. It's carcinogenic, sets off cancers. It's atherogenic, clogs arteries. It's pro-inflammatory for sure. And it disrupts enzyme system in, in all the cells of the body. This is what we inflict on ourselves with every meat-based meal. Now, when a real flood tide is going through your house, you get concerned for the stain that's going to get left behind in your carpet and your baseboard and your walls. Well, the red tide leaves its own kind of, tie, of uh, stain behind. Um, the food effects over time equal the health effects. And if you're eating three meals a day over the course of a year, that's over a thousand times a year you flooded your tissues with these red tide marauders that cause molecular disruption on so many levels. And so I tell the med students and the young physicians, when you open the door in the clinic in the examining room and you walk in, who's sitting there? You see the man with the angina, the asthmatic lady even using her inhaler, the man with the diabetes injecting insulin, the woman grieving over the, the scar of face from acne. Etiology unknown, really? Uh, knowing what we know, are we not looking at the repeated effects of, um, of red tides flushing through the tissues again and again and again? Food effects over time equal the health effects. Food is so powerful. Within minutes of eating anything, 
molecules of that food are flowing through every cell in our body where your DNA lies unfolded, where all your genes are exposed. And the food molecules wash your cells and they wash over your DNA and they play your DNA like a piano. And the food molecules turn genes on, they turn genes off. They induce enzymes, they shut enzymes down. This is what epigenetics is. And every meal brings in not only nutrition, it brings in information. Every meal changes us on a genetic molecular level. And you don't need to be a geneticist to understand that the genes that are going to be turned on by this broiled steak with all the oxidized fats and aldehydes and new 5GC and endotoxin and, and AGEs, the genes that are going to be turned on by this broiled steak that we know uh, promote aging and inflammation, autoimmune disease, cancer growth, um, those genes are going to be a totally different set of genes than those that are going to be turned on by this salad that floods the tissues with phytonutrients that are stabilizing, that quench free radicals, that promote tissue repair, the, that promote membrane stabilization. They, they give the chemical message to the tissues, shh, calm down, everything's okay, and it promotes tissue repair. And to say it in a sentence, your genes may load the gun, but your diet and your lifestyle pulls the trigger. That means you may have a, or your patient may have a genetic propensity towards developing a given disease. But whether that disease actually manifests in that person's body, largely, not completely, but largely, largely depends on the diet and lifestyle choices that person is making and the molecules they flow through those cells on a regular basis several times a day. Here's such a powerful illustration of this. This left-hand panel, this is a genetic readout of a man with early stage prostate cancer. And all these red dashes, uh, these are active oncogenes. They are promoting cancer growth. And you can see how many are, are active here. This man went on a whole food plant-based diet for six solid months, soups and salads and sticking veggies and chilies and curries and, and all the healthy plant-based foods uh, that, we're, that we're pointing out here. And six months later, they do another biopsy. Same man, same prostate, same genes. And look at how many of these red oncogenes have now been silenced and so-called turned green. What a powerful tool to, to see how food affects us on a daily basis. How can we withhold this information from our patients? They have such power to change their own medical destinies. <laughs>